Awesome. Ladies and gentle people. Sharing the love. Current. And we have the equal sign with three lines. Remind me, Emily, what does this one mean? The three. The three. That's just like the It's defined as. The current is defined as DQ DT. The derivative of the charge as a function of time. Dimensions on current linking? Coulombs per second. We call these amps, amperes, amps. Coulombs per second. This, just so you know, specifically would be instantaneous current. You could also have current as delta Q over delta T, which would be the average current. Let's see. Oh, amps, just so you know, this is a base SI dimension. Amps, a base SI dimension. I would have thought it would have been coulombs, but it is not. It's coulombs per second, which is the base SI dimension. <coughs> so literally, current is, if we had a wire in front of us and we had charges going through those wa that wire and a stopwatch, we could count one, two, three, and then stop. And we take <coughs> the amount of time it took and put that underneath the amount of charge that went by literally that would be what the current is. It is charge per second. Please note, if the electric potential difference on the wire is equal to zero, you get no current flow. It's a basic concept. If there is no electric potential difference, then current will not flow. Clearly, we'll talk more about what that means in a little bit. Generally, we deal with something called conventional current. In conventional current, we the direction of the current positive is with the direction that positive charges would Note, that's not the direction that positive charges flow, but rather the direction that positive charges would flow. Why is it the direction that they would flow, Travis? Um, I don't know. Who can ask the question? Why is this the direction that they would flow? Nick? Because it's the electron that they're flowing at the time. In general, for the most, most of the time, it is actually the electrons that flow. And electrons end up flowing opposite the direction of the negative of the conventional current, but because the electrons are negative, that would be positive charges flowing in the opposite direction. So, in general, when we talk about conventional current, we're going to talk about the direction that positive charges would flow. Unfortunately, that's not generally what happens. It's the free electrons that end up flowing, and they flow opposite the direction from the current. So when we say current, we're talking about the direction of positive charges and the way that they would flow. It is an unfortunate thing that happened in science. You would think that, I mean, like, they kind of picked this as the direction, direction that, you know, the charge was flowing and it ended up being wrong. Oh. Why didn't they change it? Like, just like, because it falls like, bless you. <laughs> Why is it a kilogram? <laughs> it sounds like this is a conversation you guys should have on your own. I'm, I'm not going to go. Same question. I know it does. It comes up every. Okay. So here we go. We need to talk about current. In order to talk about current, we're actually going to pull out a figure from your text. If you could please open your text. Today's desktop picture is from. Uh, it's just a picture of me and both of my kids. The picture we're going to look at is on page 833. Page 833, and the figure is this one. 833. In this picture, 
It's an unusual amount of hubbub. I know you are feeling especially spirited this week, and especially today. But let me wash your spirit. <laughs> let us learn instead. I know. I'm sorry. Thank you. We have a wire. In the wire, we have charges that <coughs> are flowing. You can see Q moving to the right. There is a cross-sectional area. There is a displacement. And basically, we're looking at this small portion of the wire. And we're going to derive the equation for current for this small portion of the wire. So we're going to look at using this equation. The current equals the delta Q over delta T. And we're going to start out by looking at delta Q. Delta Q specifically is the number of charges in this specific area, which is going to be the number of charge carriers multiplied by the charge per carrier. Right. It's going to be the number we can count them. One, two, three, four, etc. And then we're going to multiply it by the charge on each one of these carriers. So that is delta Q. Well, we need to define this, N, which is called the charge carrier density. That's right, we have a lot of different types of densities. This is the charge carrier density. We'll have current density in a little bit. Charge carrier density, which is the number of charge carriers per unit volume. The charge carrier density. It's the number of charge carriers per unit volume. In other words, the number of charge carriers is equal to N times V. So delta Q then is equal to N times V times the charge on each carrier, which is just Q. In other words, the charge carrier density multiplied by the volume multiplied by Q, the charge per carrier. Well, the volume of this section right here is the cross-sectional area multiplied by delta X. Volume, it's going to be the area of the base, cross-sectional area, multiplied by the height, delta X, because it's a cylinder. So we could substitute in for the volume, the area times the displacement, and times Q. Well, we have delta X. We're going to look at velocity. Now, velocity is equal to delta X over delta T, which means that delta X is equal to the velocity multiplied by delta T. This velocity has a specific name. It is V sub D for the drift velocity. And what this is, is this is the average velocity of the charge carriers. All the charge carriers are not marching along in the same direction, moving at the exact same speed. But what we have here is this is basically an average velocity of all of our charge carriers, is the drift velocity. So we can now substitute for delta x the drift velocity multiplied by delta t. So delta q then is equal to n, the charge carrier density, times a, the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the drift velocity, multiplied by however long we happen to be looking at this, multiplied by q the charge per carrier. So if we return all the way back to our equation for current, and we substitute in what we just got for delta Q, we have N, the charge carrier density, multiplied by the cross-sectional area times the drift velocity, multiplied by delta T, multiplied by the charge, divided by delta T. And the delta T cancels out. And what you get is that the current is equal to the charge carrier density multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the drift velocity, multiplied by Q. This is an equation for current. And please note, this actually is on your equation sheet. So this is not, um, well, it is something you're going to have to remember, but it's at least on your equation sheet, so you can have it on for your response questions. So. An important thing to realize about the drift velocity. In general, just a kind of an average, the drift velocity is approximately 0.1 millimeters per second. That's not very fast. <clears throat> yeah.
Yet, when I flip this switch, the switch causes current to flow. Now, I flip the switch. And at this time, we now have little charges. Look, they're going at one-tenth of a millimeter a second on their way to the light bulb. Hold up, they're almost there. Almost there. It's going to take a while. Right? So why is it that if the drift velocity is so small that when I flip that switch, the lights turn on like that? The silk. It's kind of like pressure, like as soon as one electron moves, like it bumps up against it. Remember, the wire is full of electrons. So as soon as I flip that switch, it's like having, I like to think of it as a water, right? Think of it as full of water. As soon as I flip this switch, we start pushing on the water here, and all of the water gets pushed. All of those electrons start flowing all at pretty much at the same time. It's not quite, but it's close enough. So what happens here is because the wires are already filled with electrons, they all start flowing at this drift velocity. It's not that they need to go all the way from the switch to the light bulb. It would be a long time if that were the case. But so is it possible then like a brand new wire which doesn't have charge in it yet? A wire by definition is made of uh. <laughs> right? It's made of metal, which had the whole reason we use metal is because it has free electrons. So that's what it is. So no it might.